Hello everyone, my name is Mike and welcome to the second tutorial in the Puppeteer tutorial series. In this video, what we will be doing is talking about how to access elements on the page. Like I said in the previous video, we will be using Amazon products as an example and we are going to, to get each product information like title, image URL and the price. So here is a quick explanation from the previous video. I'll show you how we can get each product and for each product grab the title, the image and the price. So you see we have a list of products and for each product we will get those information. As you will see if I inspect element I can get the source, so the URL of the image, I can get the title and I can also get the price. So first of all, let's start by loading the targeted page. So I'll copy the link of Amazon, paste it here. So now Papito will open that page. It will open a new page and go to that page. So let's test it out. So you can open command line or open terminal like I did here. So click terminal, new terminal, that's on VS code. And we will going to run node index.js. So as you will quickly see, we have an issue here. It doesn't fully load the page. So what we can do for that is give it an option called default viewport and now set it to false. So when we, we want the default viewport to be on false because we don't need the default viewport, of course. We need it to adjust to our screen. So we're going to do that. Another thing that we're going to do is use a data directory. So user data dir. And that's for Amazon to remember our actions. I was testing that before and I saw Amazon has CAPTCHA. So after a few tries, it gives you a CAPTCHA. Now we're going to use a default directory. And now I have already solved that CAPTCHA manually once, and now it remembers me, so I don't have to solve it again. So yeah, use that. And if the CAPTCHA shows up, solve it, close it, reopen it, and it should work correctly. Now we want to locate the selector of the list and then map each element. So let's go here. Actually, let's rerun it. You can use CLS, clear the terminal and also to stop the, the app from running, just do control S, control C, sorry, control C. So now let me rerun the app and now as you will see, it's running on full screen right now. So now we want to locate the selector of the list. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll just select a project, scroll up and right here. We need to locate the box that surrounds all of the products and copy paste the class right here. Before we do that, I want you to show, I want to show you something that I found on Stack Overflow that will help to map the products. So what we'll do here is copy this code. And let me explain you what happened here. So we will we will give the parent class name right here. And by parent, I mean the box surrounding the products. And the pro products is called children. So what we are doing here is we give the class name of the parent and we're mapping each children. So let's copy paste the class name. Actually, it's multiple, so we will do all of them. Make sure you put a dot in front of it so it knows it's a class. If it's an ID, you will put hashtag. But yeah, make sure you do that. Now we want to make a change right here. So first of all, let's change the names. So instead of tweets, we will do product, and then here product, 
and here it, it should be the same here we will put what we want and for now let's do the title and put this right here this is the selector of each product and we will console the log the title now let's remove those right here and here we go now we want to do a change we have to find the selector of the title so let's go back you can click right here which says select an element in the page to inspect it and we will just hover over the title and as you see it's inside a span so i'll do copy and copy selector but this one is really huge and it's not dynamic as you see it has numbers so for example it says choose the first product right here well we need to do it dynamically so i'll just copy the last three elements right here which are dynamic because they don't have like a number right here specifying them so i'll do that copy it go back and we are going to run a query selector because we want to locate those and we want to get the text content so the text inside the span now let's do control c sls and rerun it and if we go back okay we only get one of the products so what we should do is point down and then give it the class name of each product let's find the class name right here as result item rerun it and here are the titles of course it gives us an error at the end so it gives us an error because they are not all products so all of the s result item they are not all of them products so what we will do is try catch we don't care if they are not all products we just want to get only the titles of the products so in case we get an error we will just do nothing about that but we don't want the app to stop so let's rerun it and here we go there is each title for each product now let's do that let's do the same for the price so not all products have a price but don't worry about that let's go here inspect it and we want to get the class name which surrounds the 59.99 we will, we don't want to get the discount so we, we, what we can do is get the class name. So let's copy this one first. Do price. Go back. Copy the class name. And we will do span because we want to get that class name and get the span inside it, the first one. Or we can just give it the class that's better now let's consider the look the price instead and here they are lastly we want to get the image URL so let me inspect it but as you'll probably see actually no we can do that yeah so we want to locate the class name with s image so let me again create another variable for the image go back copy the class name
and this time it's a bit different. So now we don't want to get the text content because it doesn't have any text, but instead we want to get the attribute, which the attribute is the source. Okay, please don't do that. Okay, so it's the source. So to do that, what we can do is dot get attribute and give it the source. I believe that's it. Let's test it. CLS and rerun it. And there it is. So what we can do to get old products. So even if there is not a price, get it, still get it. What we can do is let title equal to something. So let's equal to null. Let price the same thing. And let image same thing. Now we can have a try catch for each of them. So if one fails, it doesn't matter for the other one, it will still update. Now let's remove the const. There you go. Let's remove that for now. And at the end, let's do console.log title price image. Run it again. And there you go. So we say original. And if we go right here, there is no on the price and we get the image successfully. That's great. Now, what we can do is update the items. So we say let items to an array. And for each product, we're going to push an object of the information into that array. So items to push title price image. Remove that and we will do at the end onset the log items for now let's do length so we make sure we get all the products and the products are 24 so we should see 24 so let me stop the application and do node index okay we get 27 now i'm going to explain why so we have a try catch in the title as well and that's wrong so well actually that's right we just have to do one more thing is to say if title doesn't doesn't equal to null because each product has a title for sure it might have it might not have a price or an image but it has a title for sure so if if there is a title then push it so let's try that And there you go, there are 24. Now if I console the log the items. There they are. So product number one so shouldn't have a price. It doesn't. Then the second one has a 59.99. So let's go here, 59.99. This is the title and this is the image. So let's visit the image. And there it is. So let me show you what we will do, we will be doing in the next video. So in Amazon, as you will see, it has multiple pages. So what we are going to do is save the product for the page one, let's say, and then click next, save the products from for the page number two. We actually, we are not going to save them, but we are going to append them to the products we already have from the page one and so on for the page two, page three, until we reach the maximum pages. So we will be clicking next, next, next until we are on the last page. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
leave a like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss my next episode on this puppeteer series.